When I am going on a destination hiking trip, I like to organize my thoughts by remembering the three T's. That is the trail that I'm going for, the transportation to the trail, and the travel to get there. The first T is trail. I'm going on a hiking trip, I need to know what trail I'm hiking. So when I'm researching, I think about a lot of different factors. The first one, distance. What kind of trail am I looking at and how long is it? Another consideration is terrain type, and that mostly includes elevation gain and loss and over how long. Another factor to consider is conditions. The conditions of a trail change very seasonally. <laughs> and you wanna know that you're going to be on the trail at a time when it's a good time to be on that trail. I like to check what kind of amenities are gonna be available at the trailhead. Mostly this is bathrooms. If I'm expecting there to be one and there isn't, ooh. So is there a bathroom? Is there garbage facilities or will I have to pack it in, pack it out? And then also water. Do I need to fill up my water bottles beforehand? Lastly, when I'm researching a trail, I like to know who the land manager is for the area. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, permitting. Some hiking trails are so popular that you actually have to enter a lottery many seasons before in order to hike. Most trails you can just self-register at the trailhead, but it's good to know before you go. Secondly, it's important for access. For most nationally managed lands, you can use something like the America the Beautiful to get into national parks and park at Forest Service trailheads, but all land managers are different. So in Washington, you need to have a Discover Pass to park on Washington lands. The second of the three T's is transport. I think of this as how do I get from where I'm spending the night to the trail that I'm hiking at? If I'm driving, I'm checking in, can my car handle the road to the trailhead? Do I have enough clearance? Do I have four by four? I'm also checking, is the road even open? But maybe I'm not driving. In a lot of popular hiking destinations, there are shuttle options so that you don't have to deal with traffic or congestion. You can just hop on a bus. The third T on our list is travel. That's the same as any kind of travel. How am I getting near there? Is it by taking a flight? Is it I'm going on a road trip? Where am I staying? Where am I going? How am I getting there? Whether I'm flying or driving myself, packing is more or less the same stuff, but when I'm road tripping, I kind of tend to throw everything in the kitchen sink in the back of the car. If I'm flying, I have to be a little bit more considerate. When I'm packing for flying, I'm considering what goes in my carry-on and what's in my checked baggage. As much as we would love things to go smoothly, sometimes your checked bag doesn't make it to your destination with you. So it's a really good idea to have all of your actual essentials in your carry-on so you can still go hiking even if your luggage didn't make it to you. So what do I use as a carry-on? I like to have my carry-on also be my hiking bag. I'm looking for something that's medium sized, not too big, bulky or heavy, but also big enough to fit all of my essentials. I also like a pack that has a hydration bladder because I'm a thirsty hiker. So what goes in here? I like to start with a change of clothes in case my checked baggage doesn't make it to me that I'm not stuck in one outfit for the whole time. So tomorrow's clothes, that includes underwear and socks. Next up, 10 essentials. I keep my 10 essentials pre-packed in these small dry bags. This is stuff like headlamp, repair supplies, emergency blanket, and this is my first aid kit. I also, when I'm flying, remember to take out any sharps or liquids. So in my first aid kit, that is hand sanitizer and first aid scissors. Those are gonna go into my checked baggage. These are gonna go into my carry-on. Next consideration is shoes. I like to travel in something that's pretty comfortable, easy to get on and off in an airport, but also that I'm comfortable hiking in. So that could be uh, like a heavier hiking sandal, or it could be a lighter weight trail running shoe. One important travel essential to mention is backup battery. I carry this with me when I'm hiking in case my phone dies, but I also want it on the plane in case my phone dies. This is a small power bank, a wall charge plug, and my phone cable all together here. I want that easily accessible. Obviously, all of my water receptacles need to be dry and empty to go through security, but as soon as I get through, I'm gonna wanna fill up that water bottle. I have the bladder, but I also tend to carry a Nalgene, easier access and 
more water hold capacity. So I'm gonna keep that accessible. And then we talked a little bit about water sources on the trail. If I don't have to carry all my water, I love to filter while I'm on the trail. So I'm also going to bring a filter so that I'm ready. Last up, star of the show, snacks. There are certain kinds of snacks that I reach for and often I'll bring them with me just in case the stores that carry those snacks aren't accessible to me when I'm traveling or to prevent me from having to make another stop. My absolute favorite are the super sour Scandinavian swimmers. They travel with me everywhere. So I'm just gonna add a couple extra things in case I get hungry on the plane and also in case I don't find anything at my final destination. So that's what's in my carry-on. Let's talk about check baggage. This is where I bring all of my extra clothes, stuff for if it's really warm or stuff for if it's really cold. Got lots of different options there. Also toiletries, liquids, sunscreen, that kind of thing. And then whatever shoes I'm not wearing. I like to go for kind of a medium sized duffel, something that's not too big or heavy or complicated to carry, but also obviously big enough to fit everything that I want. Now, I mentioned it before, but just double check. Anything sharp or liquid needs to move from the carry-on into the checked bag. That's sunscreen, that's hand sanitizer, that's anything sharp like a multi-tool or your first aid scissors. Double, triple check, because it's a pretty big bummer to lose that at TSA. One more hiking specific tip, trekking poles cannot be carried on. I have had a hard time finding trekking poles that collapse small enough to fit inside my checked duffel. So maybe you got lucky and maybe your duffel bag's a little bit longer than mine, but if you can't fit your poles into your duffel, a cool option can be looking into rental programs. REI has a gear rental option that includes trekking poles so that you can pick them up on your destination. So that's what I bring for a destination hike. If there's anything else that you bring with you, let me know in the comments and I'll see you out there on the trails.